Welcome to Lugano, an airport situated at the southern foot of the Alps. We're in Switzerland, although most of the population speak Italian here. With official support now incorporated in Microsoft Flight Simulator for gliders, this is the SimHanger configuration guide for your controller, PC or Xbox. And in this video I'll be showing you my generic config guide, and we're in one of the default gliders. I'll be using Turtle Beaches Velocity 1 Flight Stick, link to my review video below, but you can use this guide for any controller that you're using. The important aspect is what to map, and whether it should be mapped to a button or axis. Today I'm in DG Aviation's 1001 Echo Neo, because it has prop assist, so we can cover throttle requirements as well. Once you're on the runway, ready for takeoff, waggle your rudders a couple of times, and the winch or tow plane will take you up. We'll be configuring various aspects of the glider, including the gear. That's my gear up. Watch the yellow knob. I'll be cutting the tow rope any minute now. There we go. Normally I'd climb to at least 3,000 feet above the ground, but today it's just a short demo flight. And I'm now turning back to the airport. Time to dump our water ballast. We can configure this using a button, although it's not animated for some strange reason, because it is when you use the mouse and click on the handle. We're now losing the water ballast and there's the airport just in front of us. One of the big challenges when gliding of course is finding thermals and I've configured a button to turn on and off the 3D visualization. It's now on and this will help us find those elusive thermals and avoid those dreaded downdrafts. I've configured this to a button and it's a toggle and it's now off. Spoilers are also configured and now deployed i put the spoilers to an axis so we can apply them progressively just like in a real glider and gear down. And time for the trickiest part of gliding, the real challenge, landing. Using my spoilers to slow me down. I haven't configured every possible combination but we do cover all the very basics and I'll get you up in the air and gliding. Haven't tried it? Well you should. It's much more of a challenge than what you first anticipated to be. Give gliding a go, it'll bring the real aviator out in you and test your judgment and pilot skills. Now applying some brakes, trying to keep my wings off the ground, somewhat unsuccessfully. Slight scrape there, no doubt my instructor will have a word. Anyway, that's our flight over. We can open the canopy and let's now head into sim to our control options menu and start with our configuration guide for your glider. This is the SimHanger channel, my name's Mark, thanks for watching, and let's get started. Just a quick note before we kick off, there are no default glider profiles, with the exception of the controller gamepad. With the release of Sim Update 11, the profiles have been updated to now include a glider, just so as you know. For simplicity and ease, we're going to start with the default profile. And we're going to clear out all the items we don't require and then reconfigure. So we're going to head to the preset manager, second icon along, we're going to select duplicate and give it a new name. This will be our new glider profile. Name it anything you want, I'm using glider default, and then select OK. And the new profile should be the active one under your chosen peripheral. Now it's time to clear out what we don't require. We'll start from the bottom and work our way up. First of all, landing gear. It's a button toggle function. We're going to keep that. Currently allocated to joystick button 4, which is bottom left. I'm happy with that. If you're using something like the Bravo throttle quadrant, well, you could configure it to the gear handle. Next in line is power management. Now the glider I've chosen does have a propeller, so it does have a throttle. Don't really need throttle cut, but we can keep it. I need the throttle axis, so I'll leave that and configure it to an axis. Mine is configured to the left hand throttle lever here. That'll do, no problem there. You of course can configure it to any axis that you want. As this is a generic profile there's also decreased throttle and we don't really need that and we don't want that so we can delete it. To delete it click in the box and this will open up the configuration menu. We're going to select clear current input and validate and it's gone. So landing gear and power management taken care of. Next one in the list is autopilot. My glider doesn't have an autopilot so I can delete that. Click in the box, clear current input and validate. 
When configuring, you'll notice that categories you've opened before reopen when you return to the main menu. This is a bug. Quickest way is collapse all to condense the menus and then continue. Now on to brakes. We don't require parking brake, so we can delete that. But I do need brakes, so that is configured to button 18 on my joystick, which is the trigger. I'm happy with that, I'll leave that. If you're using rudder pedals, well you will configure it to left and right brake axis accordingly. Next one on our list is lights. Both toggle lights and pedestal lights are configured to joystick button 8. I'll reconfigure the lights, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete both of those. I'll reconfigure them later on. If you wanted them, of course, you could keep them. Next on our list is flight control surfaces and primary control surfaces. This is our rudder action, which in this case is the twist of the joystick. This can, of course, be configured to your rudder pedals, no problem. And it also includes elevator and the aileron axis. By default, and we're going to keep those. Elevator gives me pitch up and down, and aileron allows me to bank left and right. Quick check to make sure the axis are actually functioning and operating. That all looks OK. We're ready to move on. No changes required here. Control trimming surfaces. And the one we're most interested in here is the pitch trim for a glider. So we're not constantly pushing forward or back on the stick. By default on the flight stick, this is on the rotary wheel. At the center top of the joystick, which is fine. I'm going to leave it as default. If you're using a trim wheel, then simply defining the axis would be good enough. In the case of the Velocity 1 flight stick, it requires both buttons and axis to be defined, as shown. So no changes here for me. Let's go on to secondary control surfaces. And here we have flaps. Gliders don't have flaps. Well, not the one we're using anyway. So we can go ahead and delete all of those. Next on our list is Instrument and Systems, and under Engine Instruments, there's Toggle Afterburner, certainly don't need that for a glider, and Engine Auto Start, which also we don't need. So we can go ahead and delete all those entries. Again, depending on your personal preference, I have gone ahead and deleted all entries under Menu, Miscellaneous, and Radio. If there's any entries there that you want to keep, that's fine. But for simplicity, I've deleted all entries, with the exception of all the camera. I've left those all as default. So currently configured, we've got our landing gear. We've got our throttle configured, which would be applicable if our glider had a prop. We've got our wheel brakes. And under our flight control surfaces and primary flight control surfaces, we have our rudder, elevator and ailerons configured. We also have trim for our elevator. And a reminder, you'll need this or your hand will get tired pushing the joystick forward or back. And we have the default camera configurations. We've now created a profile we can build on. Don't forget to apply and save. And you may want to duplicate this so you've got a basic building block for the future. Let's go on and configure for the glider. Just a quick note that gliders that were in the sim before they were officially supported, such as Gottfriend's Discus 2C and so on, I haven't tested with this configuration. I'm not sure if they're using the new configs yet. To start off with, let's go to the filter and change it to all. We're now ready to start our configuration. To find what we're looking for easier, we're going to use search by name. I'm going to type in tow. And here we can see it's the winch release. Disconnecting the cable from the winch or the tow plane. I'm going to allocate this to joystick button number two. So we can go ahead and map that, click in the box, and press the button, joystick button 2 is correct, and validate. I'm now going to go ahead and clear the search box, and this time I'm going to enter water. And that's what I'm looking for, toggle water ballast valve. Once again, I'm going to map this to a button on the joystick, joystick button number 1, and I follow exactly the same process as before, validate. And that's that item completed. Once again, clear the search by name box. And this time I'm going to type in spoiler. I'm looking to map the air brakes. And I'm going to map them to an axis. So I can regulate the amount of air brakes being deployed at any one time. And I'm going to map it to the right hand lever on my Velocity 1 flight stick. Use spoiler axis. Do not use spoiler axis 0 to 100%. It won't work. If you wanted to use a button, then you'd use the Toggle Spoilers option. 
clicked in the box. Now move the axis, the right hand throttle, comes up as joystick slider Yankee, validate, and we now have spoilers. Once again, clear the search function, and with my filter on all, I'm going to collapse all the menus as I'm looking to configure my lights. There it is, select that. First of all, external lights, and in this instance our glider only has strobes, so I want to configure that, and I'm going to make that joystick button number 7. Gliders don't have taxi lights obviously, and as far as I know they don't have landing lights either. Click in the box, press the button, and validate. That's our external lights done. Now to move on to internal lights. I'm just looking to toggle the cabin lights. Not actually sure if that works in the glider we're flying, but I'll configure anyway as it's a generic glider profile. That's our lights done. And now to make navigation easier, we'll collapse all the menus again, and we're heading to miscellaneous. Click on that to open up all the options. And we're looking for a couple of things here. The first one is toggle voreometer sound. Again, this doesn't seem to work in the glider that we're flying today, but I'm going to configure it anyway. And I'm going to configure it to joystick button number 5. Not sure why it doesn't work or if I've configured it wrong. If you know of a better way, please let me know in the comments below. OK, now moving on and staying under miscellaneous, we're looking for toggle 3D thermal display. And once again, we're going to configure it to a button. And this will just turn on the visualizations of the thermals. I've chosen button number 17. So I'll just go ahead quickly and configure that. Press the button and validate. And that's our basic configuration done. So quickly to summarize our basic glider profile. Under miscellaneous, we've got our winch release. A toggle for our water ballast valve. Variometer sound, and we can toggle on and off our 3D visual display of the thermals. Under our primary control surfaces, we've got rudder, elevator, and ailerons. Under our trimming category, we have our trim for our elevator, and that's mapped to an axis. And under our secondary control surfaces, we have our spoilers mapped. The Sobo really needs to sort these menus out. Subcategories automatically reopening is a real pain. We've also configured some basic lights. We've got strobes on the exterior and we've set cabin lights for interior. We've got some wheel brakes configured and under power management we've got our throttle. Once again mapped to an axis and of course last but not least we've got a toggle for our landing gear up and down. If you're wondering about the master battery switch I configured it but it didn't seem to react in sim. If you know of a solution please comment below quick look at a few things we didn't see in the intro. These are the spoiler handle moving and I mentioned the water ballast valve. When activating with the mouse we're able to get animation but not with the toggle button function. If I've mapped this wrong please let me know. And we've toggled the throttle function and this is it here in action. Now just going to push the throttle lever forward and move it up to full throttle and we can hear the engine spooling up all working as intended. So that's the basic configuration guide for a glider. Different gliders of course will have different options and alternative configurations may be necessary. But what we've covered today is all the basics and is likely to apply to most if not all gliders. In terms of sensitivities, well I found that I needed to turn down the sensitivity for my rudders just by about 10% and a similar mount for my elevator trim. All the rest I left at default. For the ultimate experience of course, try this in VR. Gliding in VR is amazing. And if you're not into VR, no problem. Try the Tobii Tracker 5. The added immersion, well it's amazing. Check out my review video, link below. And if you're interested, there's also an affiliated link. Use the coupon SimHanger and get a 5% discount. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found it useful and informative. Stay well, see you soon, and bye for now.